I've had a lot of questions about focus bracketing and focus stacking, which cameras can do it and which cameras can't. We're going to be talking about that in this video. But what I want to do is I want to break it down into simple terms so that anyone can understand what the focus bracketing is, what the stacking is, and how you can do it with your particular piece of equipment. The focus bracketing is where you take a series of images with different focus points in your camera, whether it be auto focus bracketing or whether you're moving the camera manually, that is the bracketing section. The focus stacking is where you take those images and you put them all together. We're not going to be talking about the stacking aspect in this video. We're going to be talking about the focus bracketing, how to do it, and I'll give you some tips on how to improve your success rate when doing focus bracketing. So the first things that I want to talk about is no matter what gear you've got, your success rate, half of it, that is, comes down to your subject. If that subject moves, whether it blows in the wind or whether your insect moves, then that bracket will not work. You will not be able to stack those series of images and get a good result. Well, let's say you have got an insect that was keeping still for two seconds and you want to get a focused bracket sequence of that insect. Here are some tips for you to help you succeed in your focus stacking. As you know, I have an EOS R. This has no focus stacking ability at all. You have to do it manually. There are several ways you can do it. You can move your camera towards the insect or you can manually move the focusing ring as you take pictures. But there are a couple of factors within your gear that will make your focus bracketing a success. And that is the speed of your camera and your flash's recycle time. When it comes to bracketing and stacking, your flash is probably your best friend. First of all, we're going to talk about auto bracketing. This is my Olympus camera here. This has focus bracketing and stacking built in. We can enable it in the menu. We put the power of our flash into manual and we can start stacking. And admittedly, it is a lot easier if the camera has this feature, but it's not end game if your camera doesn't have this feature. You don't need to go selling your gear and buying a camera that has the feature if you don't want it. We can do it all manually because again, it comes down to light and speed of the camera. When I say speed of the camera, I'm talking about your frames per second on your camera. Now, just because your camera says it can do focus stacking, not all cameras are built the same. Some cameras can do stacking, but they can't do it with a third party flash, just as the Canon EOS R range. They have focus bracketing built into the camera. Unfortunately, they will not trigger a flash when doing stacking. I have here a Canon EOS R7 that has been graciously lent to me by a friend of mine named Drew. Hello. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my flash whilst we do a focus bracket here. Now, as I've said before, if you are a natural light photographer, nothing wrong with the Canon cameras. The bracketing will work perfectly okay. And that is, uh, again, if you're doing an LED, continuous lighting, you're perfectly okay. However, if you are like me and you do like to use a flash, this is the problem. So I'm going to come into the focus bracketing now on the R7 and I'm going to enable it. I'm going to leave the number of shots to 40 and the, the focus increment to, um, I believe that's set to one. I'm just going to leave all that as it is, okay? So I'm going to come out. I have my flash set up at manual at 132 para and we are going to press the shutter button and you'll see the problem here. You'll see that the, uh, the flash won't fire. There we go. We just did 40 images. That is fast. That is very fast. Yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, it doesn't trigger the flash. And the reason it doesn't trigger the flash is because the Canons are using the electronic shutter, which doesn't, again, trigger the flash. Canon seriously need to put an option on these cameras to select which shutter you want to use when focus bracketing. That doesn't mean you have to run out and buy a new camera. What I'll do now is I'll show you how to do a manual focus stack using the gear that you have. So let's talk about how you can do stacking on a camera if you've got a camera that can't trigger a flash, or like me, if you've got a camera that doesn't support bracketing at all. What you need to do is you need to switch it into manual. Let's turn on my EOS R now. And what you want to do is you want to configure your camera so it has the fastest frame per second with the flash. So Again, I've said it before, if you're a natural light photographer, you've got not much to worry about. All you got to do is 
set your camera into a high speed continuous. Now this is my high speed continuous. Okay. And I can get with my uh, settings, clears the buffer quite quickly because I'm using a fast card. So I don't have to worry about slowing down and waiting for the card. And if I'm using natural light, all I've got to do again is we press our, well, we set our focus, press the shutter, and we're just going to manually move the focusing ring. That is literally how you do it. And that's basically what the auto bracketing feature on my Olympus is doing. All it's doing is moving the focusing, except the auto feature does it more accurately than what I can do it myself. And here's the key to getting your bracketing done. Again, it's the frames per second. If we have an insect that we need to take 20 images of to get a complete stack, it's 20 images, but that insect is going to move within two seconds, you need 10 frames a second to get a complete bracketed sequence that you can then stack later on in the software. So when it comes to your flash, you need to choose a flash that can keep up with your camera. Now, unfortunately, the Godox MF12 doesn't keep up with the camera. It will actually drum down my settings. So I've got it set to ETTO, which I tell you not to, and this is why. Let's uh, do a sequence, and you'll notice now, check out, I'm going to put up the frames per second up in the corner. You'll see how slow this is now. You see that? And I'm only counting every flash that goes off, not the blank flashes. So if you're having it where you've got blank images, that means your, your flash is too slow, to recycle and can't keep up with your camera. So we need to change that to a manual. So now I'm gonna start off at the quickest, which is the lowest power, is one 128th power. And we're gonna do the same again now. Okay, so you can see the frames per second, how that has gone up. So by switching my flash to a manual and lowering the power as low as possible, I've increased the frames per second that I can get out of this camera, which again, if you've got a moving subject that moves every couple of seconds, I've increased my hit rate of getting a successful stack. Now, what's what happens now if I put this to full power? You see, this won't keep up. Can you see? The reason this happened is because when you turn down the power on the flash, the recycle time is quicker. The same as if you go up in power, the higher the power on the flash, the longer it takes for the flash to recycle. And of course, as the batteries in your flash begin to run out of juice, your recycle time will also be reduced. So what you want to do is find a flash that will keep up with your frames per second, or if you've already got an existing flash, find out how low in the power you can go. So now I'm going to go to 164. Okay, that's keeping up. 132. That's good. 1 16th. We're good. 1 8th. That looks good. Let's try 1 4th power. That's good. So, there. So, it won't keep up at one half power. So on this particular setup, again, the frames per second on the SR isn't very high. It's about five frames per second. So I now know that I can go as low as one fourth power on this particular setup, and I can do an image stack. So if we set our focus, we start taking our images, and we move the focusing. And that will give us a focus bracketed sequence that we can then edit later on in the computer. Let's put the SR to one side. Again, that is how you do it if you're doing it manually. It's the way I would recommend that you do it. Let's bring in the Olympus. So again, the Olympus has auto bracketing features. So if I lift this up now and turn on the bracketing, and I know for a fact through just experience of using it, at 1 16th power on this particular flash and, and uh, camera combo, it does have the odd black frame which is why a lot of uh, Olympus shooters will shoot their flash at 132 power. Okay, and you can see the frames per second there. So again, 
the higher the frames per second, the more chance you've got of getting a successful stack. Now, another thing that we can do with the Olympus is we can turn off the bracketing and do our stacks manually. So what I can do is if we turn our flash right down to 128 power, I'm going to make sure I've got my high speed continuous selected. Okay, high sequential. And now watch how fast this is. Okay. And what you can do is you can go through your images and find out how many are black, how many are not black. And that is basically keeping up with the camera. That is a very high frame rate. And again, the higher the frame rate, the more successful stacks you will get because the insect isn't moving between those particular frames. So again, basic mathematics. Uh, you can adjust it for your setup. You've got an insect that requires 20 frames to have a successful stack. It will move within two seconds of you starting the stack. That's 10 frames per second to get a successful stack. So if I've got an, uh, a camera like my SR that's only doing five frames a second, I will only get halfway through the stack before the insect moves, which means I haven't got the stack. But having equipment that is a lot faster, such as the Olympus, I'm able to get a higher frame per second, which means I often get more successful stacks with this gear than I do with the Canon. That doesn't mean I can't do focus stacking with the OSR. It just means I get less of a hit rate with the OSR because of the low frames per second compared to my Olympus. So what is your take from this is you get the gear that you're using together and find out what the highest frames per second you can get out of your gear by attaching your flash setting your camera over to manual or auto bracketing and then playing with the flash power to see how high you can get that frame rate if you don't have any auto bracketing features you can do the same again but all you're doing is having to move the focusing bowel just move that from one to one move it through the focusing range so you get a series of images that you can then stack later on now if you're looking at buying a camera don't go buy the manual a lot of the times these camera manufacturers don't tell you the absolute truth if you're looking at getting a camera specifically for stacking then what i would do is search for your camera manufacturer that you like it can be any camera manufacturer again it doesn't matter and contact an ambassador ask them technical questions because the ambassador will know the camera inside out most of the time it's the flash that is the key to getting your successful stack if you're a natural light macro photographer you'll find it very easy to get a successful stack so i hope that video has helped you out again if you get a bit confused let me know in the comments or send me a dm over on instagram i'll be happy to explain it in more detail but for now that's where I shall leave this video. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this one. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Focus increment in increment. <laughs> and the focus increment. Stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and what you want to do is get a memory card in it. <laughs> okay. So this is my high speed continuous. Yeah, okay. That's not what it's being continuous, is it? So again, the Olympus has no card. But that doesn't mean that you can't do focus stacking without the uh, the auto feature. Got that again. Thank you for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please subscribe and click the like button. It really does help out the channel. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support in supporting me and this channel. If you're interested in joining Patreon, then check in the description below this video for a link to Patreon. If you want to continue watching my macro journey, then click one of the videos in front of you now.